Hello, this is Runit Vishish with Amazon Web Services and in this session I'm going to talk about deploying containerized ASP.NET Core Web Applications to Amazon ECS using AWS Developer Tools. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate setting up continuous deployment pipeline for a containerized ASP.NET Core Web Application using AWS Developer Tools such as code commit, code build, and code pipeline. The deployment environment for my containerized application is Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS. Amazon ECS is a scalable container management service that supports Docker containers and allows you to easily run applications on a managed cluster. Amazon ECS eliminates the need for you to install and operate your own cluster management infrastructure. Amazon ECS is integrated with familiar features such as Elastic Load Balancing, EBS, VPC, and IAM. Amazon ECS integrates seamlessly with Amazon Elastic Container Registry or ECR. Amazon ECR allows you to easily store, run, and manage container images for applications running on Amazon ECS. Amazon ECS supports AWS Fargate, which removes the requirement to provision or manage EC2 instances. AWS Fargate is probably the easiest way to launch and run containers on AWS. Customers who require greater control of the EC2 instances to support compliance and governance requirements or for broader customization options can choose to use ECS with EC2 launch type instead of AWS Fargate launch type. AWS Developer Tools and Services provides multiple options to host code, build, test, and deploy your applications to AWS. Few of these tools and services that we will use in, the, in this session are AWS Code Commit, Code Build, and Code Pipeline. AWS Code Commit is a fully managed source control service that hosts secure Git based repositories. It makes it easy for teams to collaborate on code in a secure and highly scalable ecosystem. AWS Code Build is a fully managed continuous integration service that compiles source code, runs tests, and produces software packages that are ready to deploy. With CodeBuild, you don't need to provision, manage, and scale your own build servers. AWS Code Pipeline is a fully managed continuous delivery service that helps you automate your release pipeline for fast and reliable application and infrastructure updates. Based on the release model you choose, Code Pipeline automates the release process every time there is a code change. The very first thing that we're going to need to work with Amazon ECS is an ECS cluster. I have followed this developer guide to create an ECS cluster of type EC2 Linux and networking. This will give me a, a cluster with uh, EC2 Linux instances and I can use this cluster to host both Fargate as well as EC2 launch type. I'm going to share the link to this developer guide towards the end of this video. Let us take a look at my ECS cluster. You can see I have a cluster here in AWS Management Console. This cluster is called Demo Cluster and this one doesn't have any Fargate services or tasks running and it has one EC2 service with a couple of tasks and has a couple of container instances. To prepare your application to run on Amazon ECS, you create a task definition. The task definition is a text file in JSON format that describes one or more containers, up to a maximum of 10, that forms your application. It can be thought of as a blueprint for your applications. You can also create task definition from AWS console by clicking on task definitions and clicking on create new task definition. In my case, I already have one task definition here. I can click on this and I can look at the details or I can also go to the JSON tab and I can see all the details of my task definition. 
A task is the instantiation of a task definition within a cluster. After you have created a task definition for your application, you can specify the number of tasks that will run on your cluster. You can see I have a service named Web App Service in the active status right now. ECS service enables you to run and maintain specific number of instances of a task definition simultaneously in an ECS cluster. If any of the tasks should fail or stop for any reasons, the Amazon ECS service scheduler launches another instance of your task definition to replace it in order to maintain the design number of tasks in the service. Let's take a look at my service named Web App Service. I have created this service using developer guide available online. I will include a link to this developer guide towards the end of this video. Back in AWS console, I have two desired and two running tasks for my ECS service. Let's take a look at this service. Under the tasks tab, you can see both the tasks have same task definition called web app task definition. Let me click on the task definition. Task definition is required to run Docker containers in Amazon ECS. Task definition includes parameters like Docker image, CPU, and memory allocation for each task. It also includes task launch type, a Docker networking mode, and much more. In the container definition section of my task definition, you can see that I'm currently pointing to a Docker image hosted on ECR. Amazon ECS has inbuilt integration with Amazon ECR, but ECS also supports other Docker repositories like Docker Hub. Going back to my ECS cluster and looking at my ECS service properties, I can see that the two tasks that this service is maintaining are running behind uh, an application load balancer accessible through target group name web app TG. Looking at the properties of the application load balancer, I can see that this application load balancer is forwarding the request to my target group called web app TG. I'm going to copy the DNS name and open it in the browser here. You can see that currently my application is showing coming soon page. My goal in next section is to set up a deployment pipeline using AWS services that are AWS code commit for my application code repo. And as soon as application code is committed, I want AWS code build to build the Docker image and push it to ECR repo. In the deploy stage, I want the code pipelines ECS provider to update the ECS task definition and ECS service so that end users can access the updated version of the application in place of existing coming soon page. I'm back in AWS console and to get started with AWS code commit, I'll scroll down and go to developer tools and click on code commit. The very first thing we have to do is to create a code repository. For that, click on create repository. Give a repository a name. And click create. Your repository is created and ready to be used. You can use your existing Git clients and IDEs to connect to this repository. There are some prerequisites required. You will have to create your code commit credentials. The steps to create these credentials and use them from your Git client are, are included in the step one prerequisites and step two guides available in AWS console. With my code repository ready, 
I am now good to push my application code to my code repo. In this example, I have already pushed an ASP.NET Core Web Application boilerplate code, which can be seen by clicking on the repository. This is a standard boilerplate code with the Docker support. Only thing with different or the only file which I have added to this project is buildspec.yaml. Let's take a look at buildspec.yaml. This is my buildspec.yaml. A buildspec is a collection of build commands and related settings in YAML format that code build uses to run a build. You can include a build spec as part of the source code or you can define a build spec when you create your build project. Let's take a look at a couple of important sections of the build spec. First one is pre-build. In this stage, I'm setting ECR URI and image name. Then I'm installing .NET Amazon ECS tools. Amazon ECS tools adds commands to the .NET CLI to deploy .NET Core applications to Amazon Elastic Container Service. Next is the build stage. Here I'm using ECS push image. This command encapsulates operations like Docker build and Docker push on our behalf. In the post build step, code build will create a file called image definition.json. This file will contain the container name referred in the ECS task definition and the URI of the ECR image. This file will be used as an input by the deployment stage. With build spec created, I'm ready to create a build project using code build. Back in AWS Management Console under Developer Tools, I'll click on Code Build and click on Create Build Project. Give your project a name. You can optionally give description. In my case, the source code provider is Code Commit, but it could be GitHub, S3, or other Git providers you may choose. The repository that I'm interested in is the one that I've just created called ASP.NET Demo 1. I have to select a branch, which in this case is master. I'll scroll down and I have to select the image which will be used, the operating system image that will be used to build my source code into binary. In this case, I'm choosing Ubuntu. Then for runtimes, let's select standard. Image, go with the latest one, standard 4.0. Image version, you can select to choose, uh, use the latest image always, or you can specifically give the version number. In this case, I'm choosing version 8.14. Environment type is Linux because I'm building ASP.NET Core Web application. So Linux environment time should be good enough. I do need to enable this box or check this box, which will give elevated privileges during the build time to run Docker build and Docker push commands. Uh, this will be one of the requirements. Uh, select to choose new service role, or you can choose an existing service role as well. In my case, I have already created a role, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. Now, since I have defined my build specifications in a build spec file, I am choosing this option. Else, you can give your build commands uh, here as well, and you can switch to the editor, which gives you option to write your own build commands. In this case, let's go with use build spec file. With other settings, left to default, I'm going to scroll down and click on create build project. With my build project created successfully, I'm ready to create my code pipeline. I'm expanding the pipeline option and clicking on pipeline in the left menu and then click on create pipeline. Give it a name, select the service role or you can allow code pipeline to create a new service role for you. In this case, I'm going with new service role, then click next. 
then choose the source provider. In this case, my source code provider is code commit. My repository is demo one. Branch name is master. Then I'll click next. My build provider is code build. And I will select the project that I just created called ASP.NET Demo Project 1. And in this case, I'm going to go with the default single build option. Click Next. My deployment provider. In this case, since I want to deploy to ECS, I can choose either Amazon ECS or Amazon ECS Blue Green. Blue Green is a good option for blue and green deployments. In this case, I'm going with the straightforward Amazon ECS deployment option. I have to select my ECS cluster, which in this case is demo cluster. Then the service name. I have only one service called web app service. Then my image definition files, I'm gonna leave it. These are the optional settings along with the deployment timeline, uh, timeout, and then click next. With that, Review your settings and click on Create Pipeline. As soon as the pipeline is created, my release will be pushed and it will go through the all the steps of uh, building my code and then deploying it. This is gonna take a minute, uh, maybe a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna pause the video and come back once we're done. It took around five minutes, but my code pipeline has finished execution. Uh, all the steps were successful. I can look at more details, for example, for AWS code build. I can click on the details and go to the details page. I can scroll down, I can see all the commands that were executed by ECS.NET tools. I can also go back to my ALP uh, URL and I can see that the updated version of application is now deployed. To recap the session, in this session, we created a Git-based source code repository using code commit. We defined our build definition using buildspec.yml, which was stored at the root of the code repository. In the build stage, we created a code build project, which used buildspec to build the Docker image and push that image to ECR. We used AWS CLI tools to encapsulate all the Docker operations by the single push image command. In the end, we used ECS provider for code pipeline to update the task definition in ECS service. Thank you for your time. I hope you find this session useful.